Good Sunday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's weather forecast, I'll be covering yet again another severe weather outbreak today into Monday across the southeastern United States, followed by a cross-country storm this week that will bring heavy rain, heavy snow, and also another severe weather outbreak on Thursday and Friday later this week. And then the active long-range weather forecast continues with a parade of storm systems through the early April period. We'll talk about those details later on in this video if you guys are not yet subscribed to the youtube channel make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you get all of my daily weather forecast updates each and every morning on this channel here at 9 a.m i cover southern canada the united states and the tropics during tropical weather season so make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and don't forget to press the like button the thumbs up button down below the video the more likes we get the more people that watch this video so definitely appreciate all of the likes out there but getting into the weather forecast we have another severe weather weather setup today across the Gulf Coast and the Southeast. We have a stalled out frontal boundary, a stationary front across the Carolinas and much of the Gulf Coast states. And this is going to be another troublemaker for severe weather. We have a slight to even an enhanced risk, a level three of five of severe weather across portions there of the Gulf Coast with that enhanced risk across eastern Louisiana, south central Mississippi into south central portions of Alabama. That is the higher risk for severe storms. Looking at the hazards here, we do have a 15% probability of damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour from the eastern Carolinas through Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, and then back into Louisiana there. This does include Jackson, Mississippi, Montgomery, Alabama, just near and south of the Atlanta metro area, and then on up toward Columbia, south South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, Charleston, and those areas. And we also have an elongated area with a 15 to 30 percent hatched area for hail that could be over golf ball size. This stretches from central Louisiana all the way eastward towards southern South Carolina here. So we have an elongated area for some damaging hail today. And an upgrade, we have a 10 percent hatched area for strong tornadoes yet again. Here we go again across southern portions of Mississippi, including the Jackson area, getting toward Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and then eastward toward Montgomery, Alabama, and even a general 2 to 5% shading for tornadoes farther east toward the Atlanta metro area, Columbia, Myrtle Beach, Charleston, Savannah, all those areas there into Georgia and South Carolina, and then on up toward Wilmington, North Carolina as well, on the outer banks of the Carolinas. So we'll watch that threat. Look at the setup here for the severe weather. Dew point temperatures will have lots of moisture hugging up right against that stationary boundary to the north of the boundary, more stable, drier air with dew points in the 30s and 40s. But along and south of that stationary front, we're going to see dew points pooling up into the middle 60s, into the low 70s, right along the immediate Gulf Coast. And this is going to yield 2,000 to 3,000 joules per kilogram of energy, or what we call CAPE, Convective Available Potential Energy. The higher the value, the more the threat is for severe weather. And you see that across, again, southern Mississippi, portions of Alabama getting in toward Louisiana here and into Georgia. So we definitely have those higher values in the orange and red shade colors. So looking at the timing of the storms, we're going to have multiple rounds of storms. At noon time frame, we got some clustering of storms across South Carolina here near the Columbia region, back here toward the Macon, Georgia area, and even Birmingham, Tuscaloosa. Those storms could be severe with some large hail, damaging winds, and maybe a brief spin-up tornado toward the noon time frame. We'll have a little bit of a lull in the action here down across the Gulf Coast states. Again, maybe some isolated storms, but generally a lull in the action by mid-afternoon. All the widespread storms will be pushing up into the eastern Carolinas by 3 o'clock. By 6 o'clock, we'll have isolated to widely scattered supercells develop, and these could be the ones to pose the strong tornado risk, the very large hail over 2 inches in diameter, as well as the 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gust threat all the way back westward into portions of the central Louisiana area, south central Mississippi, south central Alabama into western Georgia. We want to be on high alert through the dinner time frame and towards 6 o'clock this evening, even into the overnight hours. We'll still have the threat for rotating storms um, congealing into more of a loosely organized MCS or mesoscale convective system toward the midnight time frame. And then by the time we get into Monday morning here, the Monday morning commute for work or school out there at 6 a.m., we'll still 
will be seeing some ongoing showers and storms across the southeast here, and these could be the ones to produce some hail, some damaging winds, as well as a couple of tornadoes. Going into the Monday time frame, that stationary front's not going to go anywhere. We're still going to be talking about some storms, some heavy rainfall, and severe weather. The Storm Prediction Center has, again, an area of a marginal risk for severe storms. This does include large hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes here, a low-end probabilities for some severe weather across the southeast. This covers southeastern Alabama, far northwest Florida, South Central Georgia into portions of the Carolinas here. Going through the timing on Monday, we have some storms moving through across the Carolinas, getting through South Georgia, Southeastern Alabama, maybe far Northern Florida at 10 a.m. That will sink farther South as we head in towards that three o'clock time frame, more into Southern Georgia, Northern Florida, and then eventually kind of staying more stationary in toward Northern Florida. So from Jacksonville back toward Tallahassee, some of those storms could be rumbling through through the mid evening hours on Monday at 9 p.m. Farther to the north on Sunday. Now we're going back to today. We have another marginal risk farther north, eastern Illinois, north central Indiana here. So from the Champaign-Urbana region up I-57 there in Illinois toward Kankakee, then farther east. So Gary, South Bend, Fort Wayne, Indiana, and near and north of Indianapolis. We have to watch out for some damaging winds later on today. There's not a lot of energy, though, with the system. We have limited moisture. Dew points are in the upper 40s to low 50s. Generally, what you need for severe weather is mid 50 dew points so we're kind of getting right very close to that threshold of limited moisture and but we don't have a lot of instability the cape values or convective available potential energy is not very high here we only have about 500 to maybe upwards of a thousand joules per kilogram just enough to get some severe weather on sunday so we'll time this out mid to late afternoon this is four o'clock we have some snow breaking out across northeastern iowa but farther south where we have some instability developing some isolated thunderstorms, those will develop into a broken line across eastern Illinois, northern Indiana through the 7 o'clock time frame on Sunday. That will propagate farther eastward toward Toledo, Ohio, getting down towards Indianapolis and even southern Illinois there toward Carbondale by the time we get into the midnight time frame on Monday. And then Monday morning commute, this will turn to snow across portions of Detroit on over there toward Toronto. Farther south, it's warm enough for rain. We'll have just general rain showers and some rumbles of thunder. No severe weather expected though across portions of Ohio into northern Kentucky. But then our next big storm we're talking about, this is our cross-country storm going through this upcoming week. We have another strong trough that dropping southward across the west coast and entering into California by the time we get into Tuesday and Wednesday here this week. And this is going to promise more heavy snow and heavy rain, especially for the coastal areas in northern California into the higher elevations. We could be talking one, two inch per hour snowfall rates as early as 7 a.m. on on Tuesday morning, that moves farther south, so the Sierra Nevadas get in on the heavy snow by Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening. We're seeing heavy rain now into San Francisco, the Sacramento Valley here, north central California through Tuesday evening. That continues to push farther south and towards southern California by Wednesday morning and even on Thursday morning here at 7 a.m. to end the month of March on March 30th there. We are talking some heavy rain. So the total rainfall accumulation of between Tuesday, March 28th and Thursday, March 30th, we could be adding up another one to three inches here, especially the coastal areas, especially up here in the northwestern California. California. Some of these areas could be seeing up to three inches worth of rain and that is worrisome. We have saturated ground across these regions from previous storms so there's no surprise we have a marginal to even a slight risk for flash flooding especially coastal California there towards San Francisco and then on up the coast into northwestern California Tuesday March 28th into Wednesday March 29th and again that stalled out boundary across the southeast will lead to more flash flooding there as well across the immediate Gulf Coast here from Savannah Georgia and then back toward New Orleans as we head in toward the middle of the week. Looking at California with the snowfall, we have current winter storm watches across northern and central California, especially into the higher elevations of the Sierra Nevada Mountains going through early on this week. We're going to be adding up one to two feet of snow going through that time frame. Again, from Tuesday, March 28th, all the way through Thursday, March 30th, and even some heavier snow farther east into Nevada and Utah near the Salt Lake City area, especially 
especially as you go up in elevation there, um, we could be seeing several inches of snow anywhere from about three to six inches in some isolated instances, even more than that going through the middle of the week that will lead to some more travel and conveniences. So as you go up in elevation, you see these reds and purples, that's major to extreme travel impacts. So definitely want to avoid those areas going through that Tuesday, Wednesday, and into Thursday morning time frame towards the end of March here. But then that system doesn't stop there. It's going to be crossing uh, across the country besides California going toward late week. We have that trough diving down into the Four Corners region by Thursday and then ejecting across the Central Plains by Friday to end the month of March on March 31st. And ahead of the system, we're going to have plenty of warm air. We're going to see this uh, southerly flow start to return across the central southern plains and then over there into the Missouri Valley on Thursday. Temperatures will be back into the 60s, 70s, if not the 80 degree mark here across West Texas Thursday afternoon and the return of moisture. The Gulf of Mexico is open for business yet again. Dew points will rise into the 50s as far north as the Omaha region and Lincoln, Nebraska and then those 60 degree dew points advecting in towards southern portions of Oklahoma near the Red River and then down south toward the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and Houston as we get through Thursday afternoon and Thursday night. And what this means is that with more moisture, more humidity in the atmosphere, it's going to be prime for more thunderstorms to become severe Thursday afternoon and Thursday night. The Storm Prediction Center maintains a slight risk for severe storms here with a 15% probability across east central Kansas, down through Oklahoma here, including the Tulsa, Oklahoma City area, and then again into Kansas there with uh, the Wichita region and Topeka, and then farther south into the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Wichita Falls and then back toward the Killeen, Texas region through that Thursday time frame. Again, this is five days out, so this could expand or get upgraded as we get closer. And timing this out, Thursday afternoon, some widely scattered storms moving through the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex into East Texas. Some of these could be strong. We'll have to watch these for all hazards of storms. Um, producing damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes. Then through Thursday night, again, some isolated thunderstorms. It's going to be more of an isolated to widely scattered mode of storms down here. Up to the north, though, we're talking heavy rain. So from Lincoln, Nebraska, farther east toward Des Moines, and even southern Wisconsin, northern parts of Illinois, including Milwaukee, Madison, Wisconsin, Chicago, Illinois, probably more of some heavier rainfall Thursday night. And then back to the west, more heavy snow across the central Rockies. Going into Friday morning, much of the same. Heavy snow out west with the colder air aloft and then farther east with the warmer side of the system, more heavy rain and severe weather. We have to watch a couple supercells popping across the central and southern plains going into Friday morning. Then it's reload again on Friday. High temperatures back into the 60s, this time farther north, north central Illinois, southeast Iowa here with that warm front farther north from there. More of some wintry conditions with temperatures in the teens, 20s and 30s, and it's going to be feeling cooler up there. But that warm sector, that more sector of the system will be advecting all the way up into central, if not northern Illinois, southeastern Iowa, up into the Ohio Valley with those 50 and 60 degree dew points on Friday. So a much more widespread area of severe weather. The Storm Prediction Center's Day 6 severe weather, weather probabilities go all the way north into northern parts of Illinois, southeastern Iowa, getting down here into portions of central and southern Illinois, western portions of, Can uh, of Kentucky, Tennessee, northern Mississippi, all of Missouri, Arkansas, and then portions of eastern Kansas, eastern Oklahoma, northeast Texas, and northern Louisiana. So a very widespread zone of severe weather on Friday. And this could also also expand and get upgraded as we get closer as it still is six days out. So looking at the setup on Friday, we got the snow to the north with those colder temperatures, heavy rainfall in between, but also severe weather mixed in there as well by Friday afternoon. So definitely kind of a messy mode of storms could be seeing a lot of damaging winds and large hail, maybe even some spin up tornadoes that pushes eastward. We have a lot of lift right near that low pressure system or what we call the triple point where we have the low pressure system, the warm front and the cold front there up there into western Illinois. That's the area to watch for some rotation and some thunderstorms, at least at this point, going into Friday night. Again, the location of this low will change in coming days, so we'll have to track that where the triple point does go. But generally, we'll have to watch it. And then maybe a snowstorm again on the backside across Iowa, northwest Illinois, southern Wisconsin, getting through the lower Great Lakes region, getting into Saturday morning. Looking at the total rainfall accumulation, we're seeing some decent rains Thursday to Friday to end the 
month of March, some decent half inch, three quarters of an inch of rain down here into the Midwest and also the Southern Plains with some of the storms. That leads to a marginal risk of, of flash flooding here across the Des Moines region back towards Omaha and then again down toward the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and toward Fort Smith, Arkansas. So that's the time frame to watch as Thursday into Friday for some flash flooding potential. That moves eastward and we see a lot more moisture. This is a very wet system. We're going to have a lot of snowfall, a lot of mixed precipitation and rainfall with this. So Friday into Saturday to start the first day of April, we're going to see widespread one to even two inch rainfall totals across the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and then farther south into the Tennessee Valley as well to start the month of April. Then as we go through Saturday morning, like I mentioned, we got the thin line of snow somewhere up here across the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes region we'll have to watch. It's a very thin line, so we'll have to see where this does set up. But wherever it does, or as we go through Saturday evening, this could move farther to the east. And wherever it sets up, we could start to see some significant snowfall totals here. The European forecast guidance is showing maybe some 6 to 10 inch snowfall totals here across upstate New York, getting into towards northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, western Maine, all the way back there into southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois and parts of Michigan as well. The GFS model, a little bit more amplified with the systems, has the snow a little bit farther north and also more bullish on the totals, up near a foot of snow. But then also taking a peek at the ensemble guidance, it does look like it appears the upper Midwest, so like the Twin Cities, Wisconsin, northern lower Michigan, the UP of Michigan, is probably the prime candidates for the snowfall here at this point, going look Looking at the ensemble guidance of the GEFS and the Canadian ensemble guidance, the CMCE. So we'll have to continue to watch that with the trends over the next few days. And we'll keep an eye on this for you guys. But going through the long range period, through the first full week in April, through April 8th, it will remain below normal up to the north. Again, we have a deeper snowpack up here. It's a lot easier to stay cooler through the first week in April. And again, we'll have more troughs diving down across the west coast. That will keep them cool out west as well. We have a little bit of a ridge starting to develop and kind of maintain itself across the Gulf Coast and the southeast through the first week there in April. And again, like I said, another active period. We'll have another trough moving in into the Pacific Northwest toward the first week in April. That will be probably another cross-country storm during that time frame, and then we'll be getting rid of our first storm across the eastern two-thirds of the country during the first couple of days of April. So a very active weather pattern coming up. You can see going in towards April 2nd on Sunday, another strong trough will be diving into the Pacific Northwest here and then diving down into California. So you can bet more heavy rain, more heavy snow, and some severe weather as it crosses through the middle of the country and towards that first full week in April. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. If you guys like the video, press the thumbs up down below. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. I will likely be going live today for severe weather coverage later on this afternoon or early this evening. Again, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and also hit the notification bell so you get that live stream later on today. Thank you guys, everybody, for watching. Have a great rest of your weekend, everybody.